At around 6 p.m. on Tuesday, September 5th, 2017, an undisclosed aircraft fell out of the evening sky and into the Nevada desert below. The vast tract of empty land it crashed down in is known as the Nevada Test and Training Range, 5,000 square miles of dry wilderness used by the Air Force for bombing, training, and stealth exercises. The crash site was located 100 miles northwest of the Nellis Air Force Base, in the vicinity of both Groom Lake, Area 51, and the Tonopah Test Range Airport, facilities notorious for housing top-secret aircraft and weapons programs. The pilot of the downed aircraft, Lieutenant Colonel Eric Schultz, was lost in the incident, and photos and documentation of the event have been actively hidden from the public. Given the intense secrecy of many flight activities in the area, rumors have since emerged that Schultz may have been piloting a highly classified aircraft. In the absence of official details, questions loom. What kind of aircraft had Schultz been flying that day? Was it from one of the U.S.'s own Black Project programs? Or even more intriguing, was there an unusual Russian connection? Eric Schultz was a civilian flight engineer and test pilot who joined the Air Force in 2001, graduating from their test pilot school in 2008. By the time of the incident, he had logged over 2,000 hours of flight time in a number of high-performance and sometimes top-secret aircraft and was recognized as one of the U.S.'s go-to pilots for testing new and experimental airplanes. His career was well-documented up until 2013, when he was last reported flying the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, a state-of-the-art jet which the Pentagon paid Lockheed Martin over $400 billion to develop and build. Following subsequent promotions from captain to major and to lieutenant colonel, details of his flying vanished. These missing records also initially continued to include Schultz's 2017 crash. The incident was not reported immediately to the media by the Air Force, raising a red flag, especially considering the full transparency surrounding another crash which occurred on the test range the following day. In that accident, two A-10 Warthog pilots were able to eject safely, and it was reported in full and in a timely fashion. Strangely, all details about that event were released before any hint of information related to Schultz's crash began to leak to the public. When the Air Force finally did release a statement on Schultz, they refused to disclose the type of aircraft he had been flying, a telling omission. Days later, Air Force Chief of Staff General David L. Goldfein only confirmed the aircraft involved was explicitly not an F-35. The following week, the Public Relations Department at Nellis Air Force Base released another official statement stating that Schultz had been flying a classified aircraft. Pressed further by the Las Vegas Review Journal, it was once again stated that, quote, information about the type of aircraft involved is classified and not releasable. Additional comments, however, contained the admission that the aircraft was assigned to Air Force Material Command, or AFMC. According to the U.S. government, the AFMC's mission is to, quote, deliver war-winning expeditionary capabilities to the warfighter through development and transition of technology, professional acquisition management, exacting test and evaluation, and world-class sustainment of all Air Force weapon systems. In the absence of more information from U.S. sources, a report emerged from a Russian news site, govoritmovska.ru, claiming that a former Russian pilot, Magomed Tolboyev, had contacted Schultz shortly before the crash. Tolboyev had served as a Soviet test pilot during the Cold War, flying many experimental aircraft, including the Soviet space shuttle Buran. The murky report suggested that during their conversation, Tolboyev had warned Schultz against attempting certain aerial maneuvers in Russian fighter jets. The article quotes Tolboyev as saying, quote, I talked with him. I told him a month ago, do not do what we do. I showed him dead loops, but said, do not do this. It's only our plane, dear. We know what to do with it. First you need to know what you're on. A Cossack is only a Cossack on his horse. He continued, quote, I just warned him, you cannot do this. The difference is one degree, exactly one degree. He was a good guy. He flew well. His fate is as follows. He was experienced, no questions asked. We must pay tribute, American pilots and English. Great pilots, we appreciate them and never speak badly of them as professionals. But there are some subtleties very deep that only we, the test pilots, know. I told him, you'll perish. You cannot do what I do. This is the edge. It is entirely unclear if the report's sourcing is factual, as it is unusual that the two test pilots would have spoken at all, 
let alone to discuss military capabilities as representatives of adversarial countries. No corroborating English language sources of this supposed conversation exist, but the apparent clue does raise the interesting possibility that Schultz was piloting a Russian aircraft when he crashed. Supporting the theory are rumors that back when Schultz's flight history disappeared, he had become squadron commander of the Red Hats, an elite team of pilots tasked with testing aircraft for the Air Force's Foreign Material Exploitation Program. The Red Hats evolved from the 4,477th Test and Evaluation Squadron, a notorious crew of American pilots that test flew Soviet military aircraft during the height of the Cold War for evaluation and training purposes. They were originally nicknamed the Red Eagles, due to a patch worn by the pilots that depicted a soaring Red Eagle. The Red Eagles were followed by the 6,513th Test Squadron, whose name also came from their insignia, the Red Hats. The purpose of test piloting these foreign aircrafts was both to better understand their operations and to test U.S. defense systems against them. Following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Red Eagles and Red Hats were formally disbanded in 1990, and the Red Hats were incorporated into another secretive unit, the 413th Flight Test Squadron, nicknamed the Bombcats. The Bombcats were primarily responsible for testing electronic warfare equipment and operated in Groom Lake, Nevada from 1992 to 2004. When the Bombcat Squadron was retired in 2004, the active Red Hat members continued on as a top-secret, unnumbered unit overseen by the Detachment 3 Test Wing of the Air Force Test Center, officially based at Nellis Air Force Base. Though their organizational sands have shifted over the decades, the Red Hat's original purpose endures. The pilots continue to test and train in secret with a number of Russian-developed combat aircrafts thought to have been commandeered through various means by the Pentagon over time. Both the nuclear-capable Moldova MiG-29 and the Sukhoi Su-27 have been spotted tearing across the skies over Groom Lake in recent years. And when two Su-27s went up for sale on the private market in 2009, they were purchased by a Meridican Incorporated, a Delaware-registered shell corporation that many assume was created by the U.S. government to obscure details of the transaction. It is further rumored that the Red Hat's top-secret inventory may even include a new advanced Su-30 or Su-35 flanker variant, although it is not known how the U.S. would have gotten its hands on one. Red Hat activity continues to be tightly linked with the nearby Groom Lake and Area 51 facility. Supposedly, a pair of hangars in its northern sector have been designated for Red Hat aircraft, earning it the nickname Red Square. Whether Lt. Col. Schultz was a part of the Red Hats is redacted from all records, but many have suggested that his station at Nellis Air Force Base and his documented history flying all manner of American and foreign aircrafts points to the strong possibility that he was not only part of the elite unit, but he may have even been a commanding officer. If, however, Schultz was not involved with the Red Hats, the only hypotheses remaining as to what he was flying when he crashed rely on speculation and hearsay. The various bases in the vicinity of where the crash occurred, including Nellis, Tonopah, and Area 51, are all known for their secrecy and security. It's likely that each contains its own fleet of top-secret aircrafts, be they fourth-generation Soviet jets or futuristic stealth bombers still in development. Likewise, each is home to various testing and training programs kept classified from the general public. It is certainly a possibility that Schultz was in the cockpit of some such prototype bomber. Such aircraft, like the B-21 Raider, are known to be in development and to exist at the previously mentioned Nevada bases. The B-21 is in fact the largest classified program of its kind known to exist today. But while it would track that Schultz would be well qualified to test pilot such advanced aircrafts, the evidence of his involvement simply isn't there. Was Schultz a Red Hat officer, performing aerial maneuvers in a newly acquired Soviet jet? Or was he at the helm of a U.S. stealth plane, something still in development, or something else entirely. Unless and until an official explanation is released by the Air Force, it is unlikely that we will ever know for sure. All that seems clear is that whatever it was that crashed that day, the Department of Defense has a vested interest in keeping it in the dark.